Hello. Hi there. Hi, hi, Mr. Monk. How are you? Hey, how are you? Uh, and this hi. is, let me just turn my camera on. Hey, how's it going? Hi. hi. It's going fine. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can see you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Welcome. As smart cities grow, what role do you see helium playing in the future? Yeah, you know, I think smart cities will grow in different ways um, depending on where you are in the world. I do think the one common problem that smart cities are all trying to solve is how do you connect small sensors, small devices to the internet that is one low cost, of course, not just low cost of the sensor, but low cost of connecting, but also, you know, low cost in battery life, something that's super battery efficient. And so what Helium has done over the eight years that we've been really trying to solve this problem, not just for smart cities, but for anyone, any, anyone and any device trying to connect to the internet, especially IoT, Internet of Things, it's to find that combination of being able to connect in a low cost manner, um, both on the economics of connecting to the internet for sensors, also battery life. And that's why Helium decided to go with LoRaWAN as, as a connectivity protocol to start uh, as we looked at creating a decentralized network, a decentralized approach to building wireless networks. And so I think, I think Helium has really pioneered this idea that you know, building a connectivity wireless network for any city, smart cities, smart villages, smart towns um, can be done by the people. And so I think our role in the future uh, hopefully evolves, but certainly in the short term is to provide IoT connectivity for any smart environment. Um, ho hopefully, you know, Helium can play that role. Okay, yeah. Next question is, what industry outside IoT and wireless communication would Helium potentially expand into? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunity uh, as it relates to not just for helium, but our ecosystem. Like, Ajesh, you, you found us and you yeah. found the helium community, right? It's pretty cool. Um, I know you're on Twitter. Yeah. You should definitely check out Discord. I don't know if you join our Discord community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you should. I should. Yeah, definitely. So you should. Yeah, it's at discord.gg slash helium. And the, there's so much opportunity out there for not necessarily helium but for the community to build applications and leverage this network that we built together and i think i think what's pretty cool about this is uh today it's iot and it's it's wonderful that we're doing this because there's so many kinds of use cases and sensors that need this technology so this was easy to easy problem to pick to, to try to fix and solve um, but what's incredible is out of this journey that Helium has been on, it's not necessarily the network itself um, that we've done anything unique about. It's the fact that we've enabled consumers like you, your, your neighbors, your, your relatives, your family, your, your fans around the world, Gajesh, they, they build a network, right? They can build it. And they're incented to build a network. And I think that's the key. It's incentives. It's aligning those incentives. And so what we figured out is we've created an incentive model with the Helium blockchain that tightly aligns with the creation of wireless networks, not just for IoT, but imagine for other things, right? Like, like LTE, 5G, and, and Wi-Fi. So <clears throat> it's pretty powerful. And we think that Helium, with this Helium blockchain, the Helium community uh, really owns the blockchain now. It's, a, it's an open source project the community can really take that to the next step and we're start, starting to see that with uh new partners and new partnerships um new ecosystem players proposing improvement proposals that enable helium's blockchain to support lte 5g and um and 
Wi-Fi six and so forth. So that's pretty cool. That's some, yeah. I think that's, that's cool. something that you'll definitely see us expand into in the near future. Yeah, that, is, that will be great. Yeah. How will Helium compete if the big ISPs decide to build IoT networks? Yeah, you know that's that's a common question we get a lot. Is how do how do we see ourselves in relation to internet service providers, yes. telcos, you know, and they, by the way, they have built IOT networks. A good example of a company um, is a, is an international telco called Orange Telecom. They're based in France. They built a massive IOT network, a lower WAN network, both in France and in other parts of the world. And what's really interesting is we've worked a lot with them in the United States. They don't have a network here, but they have, other services related to internet data uh, for private networks and so forth. And what I think we found to be interesting is that there's actually a, a symbiotic relationship between helium and IEs or telcos, because you, you can never have enough coverage is, is the result, right? And so I think ISPs see helium, not necessarily as a competitor, but more as a roaming partner where if uh, the ISP has committed to using, you know, lower WAN as, as Orange Telecom has, they, they can use coverage as a roaming partner for areas that they don't have coverage. And for areas they do have coverage, no problem, right? You use the Orange, uh, orange you know, network, uh, Orange's lower WAN network, but, but if they're soft spots is what they call it in the industry and their coverage, and then certainly in the United States, they have soft spots, but in other parts of the world, they, they have soft spots as well. There's no reason why they couldn't use Helium and use us as a roaming partner. Okay. Yeah. Will there be network peering support with the Things Network? Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Will there be network peering support with the Things Network? Again, this is related to roaming. You know, I think specifically with the Things Network, we, we would be happy to work with them, again, in a similar manner in which we can work with, you know, ISPs. Uh, as the Things Network has built a large lower wind network around the world, Helium is uh, well on its way to doing the same thing. Um, we do think, you know, there's some overlap, but but there's certainly places where we are definitely not overlapped. And I think, again, the Helium network, the People's network, and the Things network are very complementary. I think there's plenty of ways in which we can share the network with each other. We're open source, um, open for anybody, including the Things network. Um, and really up and down the stack, I don't think we compete at all and we don't have any desire to compete. So, um, our goal is to be inclusive for anyone that wants to work with us and roam with us. So definitely, I mean, if you're friends with the things that are, let them know we want to partner. <laughs> what are the best performing and most innovative user cases you have ever seen so far? Yeah. So the interesting thing about IOT and lower WAN is there's tons of, different use cases. Um, you can go to helium.com slash use and take a look at some examples. But I would have to say the biggest use cases by far are in the area of water management. And so this could be water leak detection mm -hmm. to water metering uh, for water utilities, um, as well as clean water sensors to make sure the water is safe for drinking. So anything around water uh, is a huge use case, a really popular use case, I would say. And it's a big concern for a lot of people and a lot of communities around the world. The second use case, probably just as big, is really around asset tracking and supply chain. And so that's things like you know, tracking medication uh, that's made in uh, laboratory to manufacturing and processing, and then shipped to clinics and then delivered to patients. Um, that entire supply chain um, 
is really critical. It's, it's critical to saving lives. So tracking those and making sure that the medication is stored properly, it's transported you know, correctly so that it can maintain its integrity and it stays fresh, um, stored in the correct manner you know, so that's so that when you use it as a patient, it's at its best. Those are all things I think that the helium network is fantastic for. Okay. Yeah. And uh, another is not so serious, but more around fun, like scooters, scooter tracking, and scooter sharing or bike sharing, and tracking those assets uh, around the city, around the town, around the villages. That's also very popular as well. What are your future plans for Helium? Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. I, I think the network is has grown very rapidly. We're very happy with that. Um, you know, we launched in August of 2019. That was our first hotspot uh, that joined the network in Austin, Texas. And from that point, on to today, we've grown to about over 25,000 hotspots that's online. We're in, I don't know, 66 countries around the world, about 3,000 plus cities. We're trying to expand as quickly as we can into more and more cities and more and more countries. Um, so we have a lot of work to do there. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of hard work from our third party manufacturers, all, all of our ecosystem partners, because Helium doesn't make hotspots anymore. We open sourced everything. So there are, are a lot of manufacturers creating and making a compatible HNT miner. And man, they can't make them fast enough. We've got, I think, 150,000 units back ordered across all the vendors. Um, there are more vendors that are going to start building we got about five more coming online soon, starting to build hopefully mid mid year, towards the end of the year. Um, that that's going to help alleviate a lot of the demand pressure. Um, but there's so just um, that's near term future, you know, long long term future. Community now on Discord, as I mentioned, is a very tech community. So, 125,000 users now on Discord, very active. Most of them are highly engaged. Uh, and that's, that's fantastic to see. And we have a foundation called DY, Decentralized Wireless uh, Alliance. And the DUI Alliance uh, is really the governance and custodian of the Helium technology. And so for us, you know, near future to mid future, our goal is to, to really empower DY and the community that is on Discord to really drive the future of Helium. You know, we're, we're the creators, but we're certainly not, you know, the, the maintainers and the owners of this open source project. It's definitely people, it's the folks on, 45,000 folks on, on Discord, 50,000 folks in our, in our community overall, and it's DY. Why? Uh, do you want to really drive this? So, you know, our hope is to empower them more, enable them more, um, and that's that's part of our midterm, you know, midterm to future plans. And the final thing is just releasing more technology, things like validators, improving the scaling of the network. Right? Uh, we're going to move away from all the hotspots being full nodes. It just doesn't scale well. It's it's too much congestion on a network. Uh, scaling that down to, you know, a couple thousand validators on a network around the world which would be great. Where they store and they process the blockchain, and they're doing the, you know, through coverage uh, in consensus groups. Uh, that's that's super important. Um, we're we're very quickly going to have about 175 hotspots on the network, you know, by the end of the year. Uh, and by the end, you got to have validators. You got to change the architecture of the network. It's got to be more efficient. We're really working hard. The community is helping us with our our current uh, tech validator side. That's looking good. Um, and we're made, you know, we're constantly trying to make improvements on 
on the blockchain itself and the, the community doing a great job with our hit process. So, so much going on, man. Um, yeah. So much going on. I've got tons of customers joining us. We're announcing new customers. We have a, a dedicated business development team now. Um, we have about four folks on the team that's growing to about 12 for the summer. We've got about eight interns coming in for summer internship here on the biz dev team and that's all they're focused on is getting usage getting users on the network so everything from small companies to large companies and water management to, to asset tracking uh and certainly trying to do deals to get those are all just you know everything we've got to do it's a ton of work <laughs> <laughs> yes Okay, great. Thanks for answering all those questions. 